Good day, ma'am. I am Francis Rex Batud, and today I will discuss a report, the first part of the topic that was assigned to us, and that is embroidery art. So, what is embroidery? Before we dive into the history of embroidery, let's first talk about the definition of embroidery itself. Embroidery is the craft of creating intricate decoration using a needle and a thread. Historically, it has been used to decorate fabric most of all, but there's evidence to show that embroidery has existed before fabric itself. The term embroidery comes from the French term broderie, which directly translates to embellishment. Throughout history, embroidery has been regarded as a sign of wealth and high social standing, but more on that later. Let's take a look at very early history of embroidery. So first is early embroidery history. The history of embroidery spans over thousands of years with the earliest example dating to the pro magnon era, 30,000 BC. The origin of technique is believed to trace back to the ancient Chinese who may have been the first to discover embroidery. With remarkably advanced examples dated to between the 3rd and the 5th centuries BC. Embroidered clothing dating from 300 to 700 AD has been found in the Europe too. Examples of stunning embroidery have been found throughout the world, each reflecting their culture's own technique and aesthetic conditions. As ancient people patched and repaired their clothes, they discovered the decorative possibilities of sewing, and embroidery as an art form began in earnest. With the rise of the Christianity in the year 1000, embroidery began to develop as a status symbol and took a prominent place in the life of nobility across the globe. Second, Embroidery in the Middle Ages Embroidery is perhaps unique in the world of textile arts in its versatility and popularity throughout history. Embroidered clothing existed in all walks of life across all corners of the globe, but in the medieval times, embroidery was much more than just decoration. It was a sign of wealth. The rich and powerful would not only wear heavily embroidered garments, but they would also decorate their homes with large embroidered tapestries. A notable example of opulent embroidery is the Opus Anglicanum style practice in medieval England. This lavish technique was used to create embroidered clothing and wall hangings and favored gold threads and ex expensive textiles. The most famous example is almost certainly the Bayeux Tapestry, a 70 by 50 meter embroidered cloth depicting the conquest of the Normans. However, embroidery as a status symbol really came into its own in the Islamic world. Like Opus Aglicanum, Islamic embroidery favored expensive threads but with an intricate style all of its own. Thanks to its position as a signifier of social standing, embroidered clothing became, became popular throughout the region and was found on shoes, tunics, robes, uniforms, and many more garments across the world. Third is embroidery in the 8th and to 20th century. So in the 18th century, embroidery became an integral part of a young woman's education across the world. In England and its colonies, learning how to embroider was part of a youth's transition into adulthood, and all young ladies who, the, who had the relevant social standing were trained into the craft of embroidery. The Industrial Revolution changed the history of embroidery as it changed European history overall. In the mid-18s, the first embroidery machine was made in France. It was half-automated and still used hand embroidery as part of the process. Yet, it was the beginning of the embroidery journey into mass production. At the turn of the 20th century, Embroidery became more accessible with people using mail order catalogs to, be, to buy their own embroidered garments and decorations. 
pattern paper simplify the embroidery process so it no longer required master craftsmanship. With more affordable materials entering the production line, embroidery lost its exclusive upper class status and became something ordinary people could buy for themselves. In the late 20th century, embroidery was no longer reserved for women only, either from the King of Sweden, Gustav V to Hollywood, actor Henry Fonda, men with a high social standing were taking on embroidery as a hobby and they weren't ashamed to show it. That was a pivotal moment in the history of embroidery. And lastly, embroidery today. The change that the industrial revolution set off continued to transform the world of embroidery as advances it in technology allowed to be embroidery to be digitalized. The advent of computers sped up the process even further, with today's embroiderers able to design pattern using computer software and upload this file into the machine for a perfect reproduction on fabric. Despite these incredible advances in technology, however, machine embroidery has much in common with its handcrafted ancestor. With early techniques like cross stitch, blanket stitch, and chain stitch still forming the basis of the art today. Nowadays, it's easier than ever to find a unique embroidery design. Maybe even it create it yourself and then place an order with an embroidery clothing specialist to produce the desired item of clothing or decoration that you are after. With software and automated machinery, you can have your order even in bulk. In just a few days, this is why embroidery is commonly used in the production of branded workwear across the world. And that is my part for this topic that is embroidery art. Thank you. Good day everyone, I'm John Chiprieta Ochagabia and today I will be discussing the continuation of embroidery the types and examples of work by the renowned local artists. So, to start, we have people of Ocalandans, the three general categories of embroidery, different types and examples of work. So, what is embroidery? Embroidery is a craft of decorating fabric or other materials using a needle to apply spread or yarn. Embroidery may also incorporate other materials such as pearls, beads, quills, and sequins. Embroidery is available in a wide variety of thread or yarn color. It is often used to personalize gifts or clothing items. Now we have a quote here said by Mr. Oliver Wendell Holmes Sr. saying, Take your needle, my child, and work at your pattern. It will come out a rose by and by. Life is like that. One stitch at a time, taken patiently, and the pattern will come out all right like the embroidery. Now proceeding, so we have here three general categories of embroidery. So we have the three general, we have the surface embroidery. The word surface embroidery is a commonly used to describe most modern day hand embroidery. So we have this example right here. And then we have the counted thread embroidery. Counted thread embroidery is any form of embroidery that uses the grid of the fabric, which is composed of evenly woven warp and weft fibers to count and keep track of each stitch. So there, and we have the canvas work or the needle work. Canvas work, also known as needle point, it is a form of embroidery that is stitched on an open canvas. So next, you have the different types of embroidery. So we have the different types of embroidery. Now that you are familiar with the basic categories of embroidery, let's discuss some specific styles and methods because certain embroidery designs can fit into more than one area. That won't be restricted to just one of these three categories mentioned earlier. So we have the curl work, drawn thread embroidery, cross stitch, black work, hook embroidery, pulled thread embroidery, hard hanger embroidery, cut work, sashiko, stump work, thread painting, punch needle, white work embroidery, gold work embroidery, and also ribbon embroidery. So first we have the crowel work. Crowel embroidery or crowel work uses wool fibers and yarns for the thread, but it uses the same type of stitch as surface embroidery uses. 
cruel embroidery has a bit more texture and I mentioned it because the wool thread is thicker than cotton cloth that is generally used with embroidery. So next is we have the John Spread Embroidery. So John Spread Embroidery uses even weave fabric and is another form of counted thread embroidery. So portions of the rows of thread in a piece of fabric are cut or drawn out and then reworked into the fabric, leaving holes. Groups of threads are left which are then stitched or woven together to form intricate patterns and the sources are somewhat slim for this type of embroidery as it is a very old art form. So next we have the cross stitch type of embroidery. So it commonly uses an Ada fabric, a stiff, even weave fabric with the holes in it. It uses a series of cross stitches as well as a few different types of embroidery stitches including back stitches and French knots and it works on a grid or graph format. This type of embroidery is a tight counted spread embroidery form which is less free form than surface embroidery. Cross stitch pieces are more uniform looking because of the even weave fabric and the stitches are completely even. So next is that we have this black work. So black work, this is a type of embroidery, another counted thread or surface embroidery technique that, like the name, traditionally uses black thread on white fabric. Black work embroidery commonly uses repeating patterns but there are instances of it that there are more free form as well. So next is we have the hawk embroidery. So hawk embroidery is done on a hockey back, toweling and uses a darning stitch. Cotton floss and a blunt needle are normally used for this and geometric designs are commonly created with this style of embroidery. Okay, another is that we have the pulled thread embroidery. This is another counted thread embroidery style that involves creating patterns with stitches that pull the weave of the fabric which then forms holes in the fabric. Now, contrary to John spread, this technique doesn't involve cutting or removing thread. So, ginapul lang siya. Next is that we have the hardanger embroidery. So, this is a type of counted thread embroidery that involves John spread techniques and cut work. It is worked on even weave fabric and most frequently uses white pearly cotton thread. A series of cluster blocks are made, which are essentially grouped together, satin, stitches, and squares of the fabric are kept up, forming elaborate patterns. Now next is this, we have this cutwork embroidery. So this involves cutting holes or shapes into fabric and using stitches, such as a hand stitch or like here, to decorate the border of the hole and prevent fraying. Now next we have this tashiko. So, originating from Japan, this form of embroidery uses a running stitch to decorate fabric. A dark fabric and light red color is normally used for sashiko fab um, embroidery. Now, next is that we have this stomp brick. So, stomp brick, this type of embroidery is more than three-dimensional. There are a variety of raised embroidery stitches that are used for this type of embroidery to add depth and texture to it. And wire is normally used to create elements that literally pop off of the fabric. So as you can see there, then it pop out and it's like a wings of butterfly. So next we have the thread painting. As you can see, Marshag painting. So thread painting, also known as needle painting, it is a form of fine embroidery that has characteristics similar to painting, as you can see. This technique can achieve a very realistic look and it is a great way to produce intricate embroidery designs. Now next is we have the punch needle. So punch needle involves using a punch needle tool and then even weave fabric such as monk's cloth. So ang punch needle, as you can see katong mga na-viral sa TikTok na ginapunch lang nila. So depending on the size of your punch needle tool and the size of your fabric holes, you can use different weights of threads and yarns. Your finished product creates kind of a chunky look made from the loops of thread your punch needle creates. Next, we have the white work embroidery. So, white work embroidery uses white thread on white base fabric. So, this monochromatic embroidery style can be seen in conjunction with many different techniques. It is commonly seen on linens with flowing floral embellishments. And also, a hard hardanger and cut work can also be a type of white work embroidery. So, next, we have the gold work. Gold work embroidery. So another fascinating kind of surface embroidery is this gold work. So that uses metal threads. 
So the gold thread is laid on top of the fabric and stitches are made across it to anchor it. While gold thread can be used, there are metallic threads that can also be made of copper or silver. Historically, this art form was seen on clothing and furniture and it was prevalent in China, Europe, and India. So next is we have this ribbon embroidery. So ribbon embroidery uses silk or satin ribbon to embellish fabric. This style of embroidery is unique because it is more three-dimensional and is a beautiful way to embroider flowers. You can use a variety of normal surface embroidery stitches, but there are also a few extra techniques for folding and positioning the ribbon that is unique to this type of embroidery. So next, we have the examples of works. Keep in mind that the world of embroidery may not always be as widely documented or celebrated as other art forms, but there are certainly skilled artists contributing to the craft of embroidery. So what will be presented right now are artworks from outside the country. So we have here the examples of bricks, um, the Braiding Project by Judy Chicago. Next we have this, another example of brick by Louis Burgoyce. Uh, it is called The Woven Child. And next, we have uh, this example of work by Tracy Eman, Eman uh, which is as of in you. And next is that we have this another embroidery artwork by Cass Facet, which is a needle, needle point. So another we have the embroidery of Miss Sheila Hicks called the miniatures. So we also have an example of works by Raymond Valera. Another example by Jose Petoy Moreno. And another by Ben Farales. Thank you for listening. That is all. Bye. Common materials used in embroidery include first is the embroidery thread which are the typical made of cotton, silk, or synthetic materials like rayon. They come in a wide variety of colors. Second is the fabric. So different fabrics such as cotton, linen, or satin can be used as the base material for embroidery. And then third is the needles. Embroidery needles come in various sizes and are designed for different types of stitches. So types of embroidery needles are First is the cruel needles. So, cruel needles, needles have a medium long eye, a shaft slightly thinner than the eye, and the eye bulge slightly at the top of the shaft and a sharp tip. And they're used for general surface embroidery. They're, they are used for general surface embroidery, cruel work, gold work, white work, and practically any embroidery technique that requires a sharp needle. And then the second is the tapestry needles. So tapestry needles have a long eye, a shaft slightly thin thinner than the eye, and the eye bulge slightly at the top of the needles and a blunt tip. So tapestry needles come in sizes and 13 to 28, with 13 being the largest and 28 being the finest. And they are used primarily for counted thread thread work like like cross stitch stitch block work and needle point or any needle work on fabric or canvas that has open holes that determine determine which where each stitch is placed and then third is the chanel needle so chanel needles have a long eye a shop slightly thinner than the eye and the eye bulge slightly at the top of the needle and a sharp tip tip so Chanel needles come in sizes 13 to 28, just like tapes three needles. Size 28 Chanel needles, Chanel needles are relatively new on the market and they accommodate very fine threads. And in large sizes, lower numbers, the lower numbers, the Chanel needles has a thick shaft. So size 13 to 18 Chanel needles will seem positively huge to a stitcher, stitcher who's used to working with finer needles. So, Chanel needles are used in surface embroidery 
embroidery, floral embroidery, channel embroidery, and anytime you want a large, long eye to accommodate your dread and a sharp tip to pierce the fabric. In fact, many cruel embroidery prefer channel needles for cruel work because the eye is easier on the wall thread and the sharp tip and large shaft make a good hole in the fabric. The fabric so that the wool thread can pass through relatively unscathed. Support is the milliner needles. Milliner needles, also called the straw needles, have smaller roundish eye, a shaft that is the same thickness as the eye, and the eye does not the does not bulge at the top of the needle. And a sharp tip. So milliner needles are quite long compared to the other needles listed stated above. So milliner milliner comes in size one to ten, with one being the larger and ten being finer. They can also be found in size fifteen and eighteen, with fifteen being larger than size eighteen and eighteen larger than size. So milliner needles are ideal for for any type of stitch where the thread is wrapped around the needle several times, and the whole needles has to pass through the wraps. So bullion bullion knots cast on stitch. Drizzled stitch and even crunch knot are easier when work with a milliner needle. So the long shaft of the milliner needles make it easier to wrap the thread around the needle many times. And last or the fifth is the specialty needles. By specialty needles, I mean specially curved needles. And for those who do a lot of beading on their embroidery, beading needles, Curved embroidery needles usually have a medium long eye, like the eye of a cruel needle. So curved needles come in a few different sizes, and some are very large, used for upholstery, while some are much finer. And the size used for most fine embroidery threads is a size 10 curved beading needles. Fourth is hoops. Embroidery hoops are used to hold the fabric taut and in place while stitching. They come in different sizes and materials. It consists of two hoops, the inner one and outer one, that fit together. Five is the patterns. So an embroidery pattern is a design or template template that provides a visual guide for creating a specific embroidered image or motif on the fabric. So these patterns can range from simple to intricate and can be used for various embroidery techniques including hand embroidery and machine embroidery. So six is the scissors. So a small, sh a small sharp scissors are essential for cutting thread and trimming excess fabric. So se seven is the transfer paper. So embroidery trans transfer paper, also known as embroidery transfer or pattern transfer paper, is a type of material used to transfer transfer a design or pattern into fabric for embroidery. So it simplifies the process of, of marking the design onto the fabric, ensuring accurate and consistent stitching. So next is the number eight is the stabilizer. So embroidery stabilizers are material used in machine embroidery to provide support and to provide support, maintain fabric integrity, and improve the overall quality of the embroidery. So they come in various types and are chosen based on the fabric and design being used. Now the timbal. So embroidery timbal is a small protective device worn on the finger to aid in pushing a needle through fabric during hand embroidery so it provides protection to the fingers from from the sharp end of the needle and allows for more precise and controlled stitching and a thimble protects the finger from the needle's point so 10 is the embroidery floss embroidery floss organizer so used to keep different threads colors organized so there are various methods and tools you can use to keep your embroidery floss organized so first is the floss bobbins, floss organizers, floss rings, floss bag, thread boxes, em embroidery floss storage software, drawer cabinets, thread spools and rocks, and last is the pins. So embroidery pins are 
The last is the pins. So embroidery pins are small, thin, and pointed tools used in various aspects of embroidery, including securing fabric, marking patterns, and holding small pieces in place. So here are some common types of embroidery pins. So straight pins, ballpoint pins, glass head pins, safety pins, optic pins, marking pins, blocking pins, and the flower head pins. So that's that's the common material used in, in embroidery. So, good day everyone. I am Reynard Linghanan Lamba and now I'll be discussing the fundamental tips and techniques in creating this specific form of art, so which is the embroidery art. So, let us know what is embroidery. So, embroidery is the art of stitching beautiful embroidery stitches on fabric surfaces with thread or embroidery floss and other materials. And it's it is a very popular surface ornamental decoration for fabrics, creating beautiful patterns on the surface of the fabric with decorative stitches or laid thread. And embroidery involves depicting beautiful imagery on fa fabric and succeeds in bringing wonderful texture to the fabric. And just like that, you can be an artist testing out your artistic ability and creating creative skill on a piece of fabric with some thread and a needle in your arsenal. And let us move on to the techniques on how to make an embroidery art. So embroidery is the craft of decorating fabric or other materials using a needle to apply thread or yarn. And embroidery may also incorporate other materials such as pearls, beads, quills, and sequins. And in modern days, embroidery is usually seen on caps, hats, coats, blankets, dress shirts, denim, dresses, stockings, and golf shirts. And embroidery is available with a wide variety of thread or yarn color. And some of the basic techniques or stitches of the earliest embroidery are chain, buttonhole or blanket stitch, running, satin, and cross stitch. So those are stitches remain the fundamental techniques of the hand embroidery today. So let us, so let us know let us know the techniques and stitches of embroidery. So the first stitch is the chain stitch. So the chain stitch is an ancient embroidery technique used in many parts of the world in which a series of interconnecting loops are made with a needle or a small hook. And the chain stitch has been identified from garments found in the tomb of the Egyptian pharaoh Tutankhamun. So in short, a basic embroidery, a uh, chain stitch is a basic embroidery stitch where loops are formed in a chain-like pattern. So, and it, and it's commonly used for outlining and creating de decorate, decorative lines. And so the next technique or the stitch is the buttonhole or blanket stitch. So, but buttonhole stitch is a hand embroidery stitch with a knot created at the end of the each stitch known as purling. So it has a very firm edge and is perfect for fabric embroidery and stitching around the shapes in a pleat to prevent fraying. And so the blanket stitch are often used to secure the edges of fabrics and this stitch creates a line of closely spaced loops and it's practical to for preventing fraying and has a decorative appeal. For the third technique is the running stitch. So it is also referred to as straight stitch and is one of the basic hand sewing and embroidery technique on which most other forms of stitching and embroidery are based. And the procedure for working the stitch involves inserting the needle into a fabric and taking out at small intervals. So in short, running stitch is simple and versatile and it involves passing the needle in and out of the fabric and in a straight line and it is commonly used for busting, for busting or creating dashed lines in embroidery. So the next stitch or the fourth stitch is the satin stitch. So a satin stitch is or the mask stitch is a series of flat stitches that are used to completely cover a section of the background fabric. So 
The satin stitch is a dense embroidery stitch that covers a larger area with a smooth, glossy surface and it is often used for filling shapes and creating a polished look. And for the last technique or stitch is the cross stitch. So cross stitch is a form of counter thread embroidery that has been around for ages and it is one of the easiest form of hand embroidery to learn and the the cross stitch is a popular form of counter thread embroidery and cross stitch is created by making an x shaped stitches on fabric with a grid like pattern and it is widely used for creating intricate designs and pictures so that's so that's all for the fundamental techniques fundamental tips and techniques on how to create the embroidery art so that's all thank you